Hey, what do we got here? A whole lot of silver. Let me help you out real quick. The old man is crazy about silver. He's going to be like a kid on Christmas morning when he sees this. I've never seen you get up from your desk that quick. I always get up, son. Not generally very Move quick. My hand. <laughs> I came to the pawn shop today to sell my silver. I have over 3,000 ounces. Growing up, my dad always taught me to invest, and so I'm here today to cash in on that investment. If they want less than face value, well, we'll see what we can work out. Wow, that is a boatload of silver you have right there. Where did you get all this stuff? So I bought it about 12 years ago, and I held on to it, and here I am today. So what do you got here? I got some 90% silver dimes over here, some quarters. I got these bars, and this thing alone is almost 75 pounds. Oh, that's cool. Most people don't realize that until 1964, all US dimes, quarters, half dollars, silver dollars were all made out of silver. And all paper money was was a promise to pay you real money. Right. I've been collecting silver, son, for the past 30 years. Silver and gold is a hedge against hyperinflation. People have been mining silver since at least 3,000 BC. But silver mining really blew up after the discovery of the New World when they found huge amounts of it in South America. All right, I just got to make sure, you know, it's all silver coin. OK. It's really important for me to scan all the edges on these to make sure there's no modern coins in here. When you look at an edge of a quarter or a dime today, you see copper and nickel. Pre-64, all silver, no copper. Um, they look right. It's the right color. It's uh, all 1964 before. Uh, do you mind if I go weigh them just to make sure they weigh the right amount? No problem. So you have 3,372 ounces of silver. You bought right at the bottom of the market. In the late 1990s, silver was down to $3 an ounce, but silver is the best conductor of electricity there is, period. Okay. Just about every cell phone, every computer, television, they all started needing silver. By, I think it was last year, half a billion ounces of silver was used just in industry. I hear that there's basically a shortage of silver nowadays. I'd love to buy silver all day, every day of the week. Because there's a set profit margin, I can sell it on the market immediately. Uh, so what do you want to do with it? I want to sell it. Ricky, this one's going to be difficult to buy, and you know why. When you're talking this much money, there's too much temptation to put a bar of steel or something in the center. And when they make them this big, they don't make them in odd weights. So you're saying this might not be pure silver? What I'm saying is there might be a chunk inside that's not pure silver. Can we uh, test this thing? Um, yeah, drill a few holes in it, take the shavings out, melt them down, make sure it's all silver. Give me a few minutes. If everything checks out, I'll pay you. If it doesn't check out, I'll give you an address where you can send it. <laughs> OK? OK. I never even imagined this might not be silver. I'm really nervous right now. Testing silver is a little work, but it's not rocket science. First off, you have to drill deep enough to make sure there's not a lead core or some other metal in the middle of the bar. Then you melt down all the filings until they liquefy and you create a small button. The last step is dropping some nitric acid on it and seeing what color it turns. When nitric acid reacts with pure silver, it turns a creamy white. If it's any other metal, it can turn green, blue to gray. OK, here's the deal. Yeah, it's all right. It's fine. <laughs> now that I know it's pure silver, I'll be more than happy to buy this humongous bar. But I have to factor in the unusual cost when trying to sell something so heavy and odd shaped. You got 46,000 for the coins, 33,390 for these bars right here. 32.39 times 942 equals. So we got a total of $110,901. Well, let's make a deal. That is the deal. You can't go like 115? No. I mean, there's not a lot of profit here. On $110,901, I'm probably going to make 1500 bucks off you. But can't you just hold all this for six months, a year, and sell it for 120? Or hold on to it for six months and sell it for 50? 
<laughs> I am not a speculator in the silver market. I'm a businessman. So what's your best price you can give me today? Um, I'll go 111,000 even. I'll go up 99 bucks. How about 112? No, no, no. There's no money to be made for it. You know, you're welcome to check around, but most people go a dollar back on everything. Yeah, I mean, that's what I can do. I can do um, 111,000. Or if you want to, you can tote the stuff around and check some more. Well, I bought it 12 years ago for way less than that. <laughs> 111 sounds good to me. All right, still 111. I'm really glad my dad taught me to invest, because today I'm walking out with over $100,000. I'm going to take one of these, Rick. Um, no, no, you're not. Come on. What do we got here? Uh, I got a gold bar I want you to look at. All right. Oh, wow. Hey, Pops. You want to come look at this? Where in the world did you get this? Grandma just passed away a few months ago. We were cleaning things out, and uh, we found this thing. Did Grandpa happen to be a jewelry store robber or anything? <laughs> <laughs> I came to the pawn shop today to see if I could sell my old gold bar. This bar kind of really surprised us. I never really heard about it, and nobody else had. So I thought, we got to go get this looked at and see what it's worth. Maybe it's sell it, get some money, and uh, split that up among the family members. What do you think, Pops? Um, it's gold. It's a big chunk of gold. You got approximately $24,000 worth of gold here. Wow. When you've been a pawnbroker as long as I have, you know real gold when you see it. And judge it by the weight of it, there's a lot of it. Before 1971, it was against a lot of owners. You weren't allowed to have more than, I think, five ounces of gold in your house, period. It was a federal offense. It was called the Gold Confiscation Act. FDR and a depression bought all the gold off everybody in the United States for $20 an ounce. And it was up until the 70s when Nixon took us off the gold standard that we were allowed to own gold again. There was a lot of people in this country who hid it because they didn't want the government taking it away. During the depression, FDR made it illegal to own gold. You could own a little bit of jewelry, a little bit of coins, that was it. The reason he did this is he wanted to devaluate the value of the dollar, hoping that would spur the economy along. The weird thing about it is the markings on it right here. What the XX means, I have no idea. So what's the deal with this white stuff on there? Sometimes they cast this in a mold, it's called investment. It's like plaster of Paris, but different. And um, you'll have crustaceans like this in it, but it'll flake right out with your fingernail. And this feels like it's actually like coral or something. I mean, it looks like shipwreck stuff, to tell you the truth. You mean like buried treasure? It could be, yeah. Um, was your grandfather a diver or anything like that? <laughs> I don't know if he was or not. He was down in the Caribbean for a while, and I don't know if he came across something there he didn't ever tell anybody about. I buy gold from people every day, but I never have gold bars from a shipwreck walking to my shop. This thing might not be worth its weight in gold. It might be worth way more. So uh, what did you want to do with this? You want to sell it? Yeah, I want to sell it. Um, I would like someone to take a look at it. This could be off a ship just because of this right here. So I'll find out if it's treasure for you. That'd be great. Okay. okay. Thanks. I'm president of Big Blue Wreck Salvage and a marine artifact expert. I'm passionate about the pursuit of history and information. Well, what are your concerns, Rick? What the XX means, I have no idea. And it looks like there's some crustacean on the back of it that's not from casting. Well, what you've got here are the finest markings. These particular stamps. I recognize from the 1500s. And even at that time, gold was evaluated on a 24 scale. It's marked as 20 carat. I could see with my own two eyes that that's more gold than 20 carat. Well, they had taxes in the 1540s and 1550s also. <laughs> so if you can get it marked for less, you can avoid some of those taxes. I think it's pretty funny that even back in the 1500s, people were trying to cheat on their taxes. Modern testing would bring this in at uh, probably 22 or better. Okay, so you think it's off a ship? Well, what you have is definitely coral incrustation. Coral will attach itself to something harder to grow. Okay. That would have taken, um, oh, decades to have attached itself. This thing was underwater for a long time. And um, this is definitely shipwreck treasure. Okay. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> there are two sites 
that have yielded bars of this type. Uh, one is from the coast of Texas. Uh, the 1554 Spanish fleet uh, was wrecked there, and there's a site in the Northern Caribbean. So how much do you think it's worth? Now times two is what you're talking about. Okay. What does there. that mean? Remember earlier when I said $24,000 in scrap? Yeah. Scrap is melt. It's just like a trade term. So you're telling me that's worth $48,000? In that neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. You can almost start melting down wedding bands and <laughs> stamping X's on it. If you can get the coral to grow on it. I got a fish tank. <laughs> All right. Thanks for coming in, Melody. My pleasure. There's probably not a lot of people out there willing to buy this thing, but here's the deal. The people that are, are willing to spend a lot of money. Trust me, a lot. So now that we know, what do you want to do? I still want to sell it. Okay. And how much would you like for it? Well, if it's worth 48, I want 48. <laughs> um, yeah, if money talks, we're talking different languages at the moment. 44? Uh, no, because if I put this in an auction, they're going to charge me 20%, okay? All right. I mean, I'll go like $32,000 on it. Come on, you got to give me more than that. It's worth 48. Mm, um, I'll give you $35,000, and I don't even want to pay you that. Cash money. All right. 35000 Let's go do some paperwork. Totally pumped to get $35,000. It was a lot more than I expected, so I'm pleased as punch to get that. Hey, how can I help you? I have a coin I think you might be interested in. Okay. It's a steel penny. Are you familiar with those? Yes, I am. Whoa. It's a 1944 steel penny. That is really neat. I know there's less than 100 of them in existence. Oh, from my research, there's less than 30 that exist. Okay. You know, I own a pawn shop and I deal in a gazillion different things, so I, I can't know everything, even though my kids tell me I'm a know it all. <laughs> I'm coming to the pawn shop today to sell a 1944 steel penny. This is a very rare coin. It was given to me as a gift for my 70th birthday. I know I don't look 70 years old, but I am as old as this coin. It's amazing. This is a really, really weird coin. This coin doesn't, isn't supposed to exist. It was, uh... That's correct. You know, World War II happens along. I mean, just everything was rationed. Bacon was rationed. And, you know, the U.S. government came along and says, hey, you know, we make tens of millions of pennies every year. Basically told the U.S. men, you have to make cents out of something else because copper is a war metal. So they started making, you know, the cents during 1943 out of steel that were zinc-plated, and everyone absolutely hated them. People were confusing the steel cent for a nickel or a dime. dime. So in 44, we stopped making the steel pennies. But when you're making tens of millions of cents, you know, there were steel bins and stuff like that. And they think that like some of the blanks got like stuck in the corners and things like that. And when they were pouring them out into the machines, a few of these got made. This coin is one of the great mistakes of the US Mint. And in general, when the United States Mint makes a mistake on a coin, that coin is gonna be worth a lot of money. How much are you asking for this? $102,000. Whoa. Uh, I am gonna call in a friend, look this thing over 100%. You know what I mean, Fraud? 102%. 102%, yeah. <laughs> Hang out a few minutes, I will get him down here, and we will try and figure out a price. All right? Got it. This coin is extremely rare and really desirable. But 102000 sounds like a lot of money for this coin. I have to do some research, and I got to call some people. It isn't every day I get a call about a 1944 steel cent. Um, this is pretty amazing. Um, these 1944 steel cents and the 1943 copper cents are probably the most famous errors of the 20th century from the United States Mint. And you would not believe how many people have dug through mounds and mounds of pocket change trying to find one of these. Because if you find one, it's a gold mine, and we're looking at one of them right now. And there you are, yes. So how many of those actually got out into circulation? Well, that's a big question, because these were struck at all three mints, Philadelphia, Denver, and San Francisco. They struck, oh, it was something like two billion cents in 43 and 44 at the three mints. And the total population of off-metal strikes is about 60. And most of them were struck at, at Philadelphia, like this one. Yeah. May represent something like half the known population. However, it's still a rare coin. Yeah, and there's only 30 of them out of a couple billion. That makes yeah, it pretty rare. Yeah, it's a very rare coin.
There is a huge collector market for these. In some senses, it's a little narrow because there aren't too many people who will part with this much money for an error coin. But for those who take it seriously, everyone wants this coin. So what do you think this would go for? Um, well, you have here an extremely valuable coin. I think you know that. And there aren't too many to go around, and that drives the price up substantially. Um, the last two of these that have traded at public auction in last year and the year before both brought approximately $30,000. And That seems awfully low to me. It's a public auction, both no, of that, them. That's OK, but you don't necessarily have to bring this coin to a public auction. No, but public auctions are actually where the most realistic prices are set because every major collector in the world gets those catalogs because there's, these are high-profile auctions. There's many sites mm -hmm. that value that coin a lot higher right. than that number. That, but okay. the, the auctions are, are very clear in determining the value of these coins. OK. All right. Have a good one, Dave. All righty. Thanks. The value of 30000 for this coin is extremely low. This is probably one of the rarest penny coins in existence. I don't know where the expert came up with that value. It is what it is. If this thing, I would give you like, I would give you 25 grand for it. No. I'm not sure you know what you have here. Well, I know exactly what I have. Oh. I have something that I could probably sell between 30 and $35,000. There's none for sale, though. There's none of these for sale. This is the one. OK. I this is, the only, this is the only one in the state of Nevada. Um, maybe, but it's still what it is. What's the lowest you'd go? You know, I'd, I'd drop it down to the minimum that it's valued at about 75000 Not going to happen. Then we will not be able to make a deal. I have a good one, though. Thanks for stopping by, though. No problem. I think the offer of $25,000 is ridiculously low, but I'll just keep it in the family, and somebody eventually will sell it for a lot more than I'm being offered today. So what do we got here? This is a solid silver Julius Caesar bust. You think it's solid silver? Well, apart from the base, the head is. OK. It's Vegas, you know. Julius Caesar, really, really popular guy around here. He has a palace down the street. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm at the pawn shop today to sell my solid silver Julius Caesar bust. I inherited it when my aunt suddenly passed. This bust was her prized possession. It was centerpiece over the fireplace. Everyone could see it when they walked in the house. I'm hoping to get about $75,000 for it. This is really cool. Julius Caesar, I mean, the guy had a crazy life. I mean, you got to be pretty cool to get Shakespeare to write a play about Chef. Yeah. So this is around 46 BC. He became dictator of Rome, which was a 10-year position and pretty much decided, you know, that's cool and all, but I'm just gonna take over the whole thing because he thought that the Senate and everything was really corrupt. So he just decided, hey, you know what? I know what's best. I'm just gonna make the decisions myself. They use the term benevolent dictator, right. where he actually really cared about the people. And as far as they were concerned, Julius Caesar was the guy, but the Senate hated him because he took their power away and then he ends up getting stabbed on the Senate floor. After he died, his great nephew, Augustus, became the first emperor of the Roman Empire. And that's why we have July and August. Yeah, he <laughs> so where'd you get it? It was passed down to me. OK. Um, you mind if I take a better Go look at it? it? Yeah, yeah. Came from the Vatican, I guess, or has something to do with it. And it says right here, you got 500 ounces of silver. Silver's around 24 bucks an ounce. We're looking at at least $12,000 worth of silver if you melted it down. Right. That being said, I mean, it is a really, really cool piece. How much are you looking to get for it? I'm looking realistically for about 75000 You know what, man? I really don't know. Yeah, somebody obviously spent a lot of time and right. money making this thing. Right. So do you mind if I have a buddy of mine come down and take a look at it? Yeah. yeah sounds good. Give me a second. I'll give him a call. I'll be right back, right? Cool. I'm pretty confident that the expert's going to come in, and I'll get pretty close to the asking price that I'm looking for today. So we'll see. So we have a bust of Julius Caesar, 500 ounces of silver. <laughs> Can't go wrong with that. And there's something to do with the Vatican on the back? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually, I recognize this piece. I've, I've seen it before. This is actually the Chiaramonte Caesar. 
And the thing that's really neat about this is the fact that this was molded from the original marble. So a foundry called Arte Divine got licensing from the Vatican to cast several of their major works into bronze and into silver. And this is one of them. But what's really cool about it is this is one of the only pieces that, well, one of two, this in the Tusculum, that was done during his lifetime. So it's a historically a very, very interesting piece. So how many of these were made? This is a very rare piece. You almost never see these. In the solid silver, there were 99. So what's something like this worth? When they first came out, the gallery price at the time was about 75,000, and you'll still see them on the market for that. For you guys and for the secondary market, I don't, I wouldn't pay more than 50,000 because I, you need to make a profit as well. Okay, well, Chad, I appreciate you coming down, man. Hey, right, thanks a lot, you have a good day. Okay, so, you know, I know you heard Chad say 50,000. Um, that's still a lot of money for me to put out like that. And it's gonna take a long time for me to sell it. I mean, it is unique. It is pretty cool. I just, I don't really want to tie up that much money for that long. I'll offer you about 30. Uh, I think that's, that's a little low. I mean, I'm looking, I'm looking to get a little bit more closer towards the 50 if, if possible. How about, can we meet in the middle? 40,000? Yeah, we can do that. Come on, we gotta do some paperwork. All good. $40,000, you know, I'm happy with that. And like I say, worst case, could have been just the silver, so. Pretty happy. Morning, gentlemen. Hey, how's it going? Good, I'm John, I'm a local bail bondsman. I had a guy skip out on me on a $50,000 bail, and I was trying to see what I can get out of this to pay the bond. So he skipped on you, huh? Yes, yeah, sir, <laughs> no laughing yeah. matter. Yeah, life is a bitch sometimes. <laughs> I decided to come to the pawn shop today to sell my rare 1861 double eagle $20 gold piece. I took this coin for collateral against the guy skipping court, and he did skip court. Now I gotta pay 50,000 bucks, so I'm hoping it'll make a dent in the $50,000 that I owe on this bond. So do you know much about the coin? Not much. I thought it was pretty good condition, but uh, I was hoping you could tell me. Was this graded at one time? Or? Uh, no, I've never had it graded. You mind if I pull this out of the plastic? Because it's not graded. Does it doesn't really matter pulling this one out. Just don't drop it. <laughs> Put down my little safety pack. Appreciate it. Appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you. How's it looking, son? I mean, it's in pretty damn good shape. The U.S. Mint started making these coins in 1849, and they continued to make them for over 80 years. But there were design changes along the way, and this appears to be the original Liberty Head. And it was a big deal to have one of these back then because $20 was a ton of money. What I can tell you about this coin is it appears to be real. This is uncirculated, mint state. This is a very expensive coin. The reason this one is worth so much money is because this was a really low mintage year. Mm. There's 11 different grades of mint state from mm. MS60 to MS70. Mm. The difference between a 61 and a 63 is the difference between 10,000 and 40,000. There's also a variant of this coin that's worth right around a quarter of a million dollars in the shape. Really? Rick, we might have the Holy Grail of coins here. I, I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> There's a possibility. Uh -huh. I'd like someone to look at it who just knows a little bit more than me. Sure. So do you mind uh, hanging out for a little bit and I get somebody down here? Sure. Okay. Great. Thank you. Appreciate it. Be right back. Being a bondsman is all about making cash money, man. I'm hoping this expert comes in, tells me this coin's worth a lot of money. I'm the owner of American Coin Express. I'm an avid collector and lover of coins. I've been doing it all my adult life. Every coin is unique. It's like a fingerprint. Okay, a $20 lib. When we had the 1849 gold rush, America had a substantial gold supply. They started issuing the $20 gold piece up till, till then they only had the $10 gold piece. So that's why they call it a double eagle versus a eagle, which was a $10 gold piece. They made one pattern in 1849, the year of the gold rush, and that's uh, sitting in the Smithsonian today. And basically priceless. And then in 1850, they started issuing $20 gold piece, uh, the Liberty. It was the highest denomination gold people had out there, $20. What are your questions or concerns about this coin that you would like me to evaluate? I need to know the grade on it. And uh, I know there's a variant of this year that's super rare and worth a quarter of a million dollars in this shape. So take a look. Okay. The variant is distinguishable by the back. It was a design which was not accepted, but some of them were issued as patterns. There's less of them, and that's what makes the coin rare. Okay, so is this it? We'll look on the reverse, and that's how you could tell with the tall letters and the shield variation and the larger wingspan. 
Unfortunately, you do not have here. Ugh. I am sorry. Okay. What grade do you think it is? Let me take a good look at it and tell you. It was a long shot that this was the quarter million dollar coin, but it's still rare and it's still valuable. But before I can make an offer, I still have to have its condition and grade determined. We could be talking thousands of dollars or tens of thousands of dollars. Looks very high grade off the cuff. Very, very minor scratches on the whole coin. Good body, very slight wear. This definitely is a MS-63 or better coin, which would minimally be worth $40,000. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot, Andrew. I really appreciate it. I'm very happy. This coin's worth a lot of money. So what do you want to do with it? Pawn it or sell it? Sell it. How much you want for it? You heard the man, 40 grand. Uh, 40 grand is not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking more like 30 grand. And that's cash. When you said it was worth 40, and I definitely need the money, um, how about 35? Um, so you know you're gonna make five grand off it. I'm not necessarily gonna make it five grand. I plan on making five grand. Uh, the, uh, plans don't always come out nah. as planned. Um, so how about 33? 34, you got a deal. What do you think? I'll go for it, what the hell. Good All right, 34000 Fantastic. All right, very let's good. go write this thing up. Very good. Just made $34,000. I'm very happy. I have to pay a $50,000 bond with it, but it's pretty good. It's better than I expected.